And even from here, I'm plumb glad to see all of my neighbors. Amen. Amen. I say to you all now, let us do our part in praising and serving the true and living God. Thank you. Hallelujah. We'll sing hallelujah. I've been running ever since I made a song. Oh, you know that my days are brighter. It's going to make my burden light. Love is a bubbling over in my heart. And in my heart. Hallelujah. 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 Cause of your love is a bubbling over in a Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, don't you know I've been running ever since I made a song. day. Thank you for allowing all of us to get here safely to learn more about your word and our relationship with you once again. Asking that you bless this service, that you bless the angel of this house that will come and give us your word, Lord, that we receive it and apply it to our own lives. Asking that everyone that is in recovery make a quick recovery so that they can come back in fellowship with us, Lord. Asking that you continue to bless us and keep us during all these trying times, that we stay steadfast in not only our faith, but our walk with you, Lord. Thank you for life, liberty, and the pursuit of spiritual happiness. In Jesus' name, amen. Down at the cross where my Savior, my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin, oh Lord, I cried. Mm, it was there to die. Was the blood, and I'm singing glory. Glory to, to 
His name. come to the part of service where the Lord has commanded us on every first day of the week to remember what Christ accomplished on the cross of Calvary, dying on the cross for our sins. He died as if he had sinned so that we could look like we had no sin. And so for that, we are grateful. We find an example of this uh, with the early church uh, in Acts 20 and 7. It says, upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached on them, read it for tomorrow, and continued speech until midnight. Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 23, it says, For I received the Lord, that which also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do remember to me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the new test of my blood. This do as often as you drink it, it remembers to me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. For whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh that nation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sick among you, and men are asleep. Let us pray for the bread and the cup. Then, Father, we thank you for this bread, uh, which is your son's body, which was broken on the cross for our sins. We also come thank you for the cup, which is your son's blood, which was shed on the cross for our sins. God, we pray that as we take it, that we take it with clean hands, a pure heart, and perfect understanding, a remembrance of what Christ accomplished on the cross, uh, dying on the cross for our sins. We saw you bless you in son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless that wonderful name of my Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of my Jesus. Come on and bless that wonderful name. Bless the name of Jesus. There is no other name that I know. I know. Come on and bless, bless that wonderful name. Bless the name of Jesus. Ooh, Lord, I'm going to bless, bless that, name. that name of Jesus. Help me bless. Bless, that name. bless the name of Jesus. There is no other name that I that I, I know. Y'all help me bless. Bless that wonderful name. Bless his name, Jesus. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Come on and bless that wonderful name. Bless the 
So on the first day of the week, the Lord has commanded us to give uh, as we have prospered. Uh, we pray that as we give today, that we give with a, a mindset, understanding that everything that we have, our money, our resources belongs to God. And we simply just stewards of everything that God has given us. We find an example when the early church uh, gave on the first day of the week in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, uh, verses 1 and 2. It says, now concerning for the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every man lay by him in store, as God has prospered him. There be no gatherings when I come. Also, we find the attitude we should have when we should give in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning in verse 6. It says, For this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man as he purpose in his heart, uh, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all-sufficiency in all things may abound to every good works. Let us give thanks for the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that as we give, that we not give grudgingly uh, or of necessity, but that we be chip forgivers. And we pray, God, that the money will be used for the edifying and the spreading of the gospel so, so that souls can be saved. We ask all you bless you in Son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, don't you want to go? Come on, come on, come on out, y'all. Yeah, don't you, don't you? Come on out, y'all. Come on, come on, don't you want to go? I'm singing, yes. I, I want to go, yeah. Come on in, y'all. Come on, come on. Don't come on, come on in, y'all. Don't you want to go? Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Don't you want to go? I'm singing, yes, yes. I, I, I want to go, yeah. Yeah, I know that Jesus, yes, he is my captain. And oh, Jesus is, he is my captain. And don't you want to go? Jesus is my captain, captain of my salvation. Don't, don't you want to go? I'm singing, yes, yes. I want to, I want to go, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Don't. And oh, Lord, come on. Come on, come on out, y'all. Don't you want to go? Come on in, y'all. Come on, come on in. Don't. I'm singing, yes. Stay right there. I'm singing, yes. Yes, Lord, I want to go. Yes, I want to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I want to. I want to go. Yeah. 
Come on, come on, don't you? And I wanna go, yes I do. I wanna go, yes I do. Come on with me, y'all. Come on and go. Come on and go. Come on, don't. I'm singing, yeah, yes. I, I want to, I want to, yeah. I want to go. Hallelujah. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is going to come from Ephesians 3, verses 8 through 12. Again, that's Ephesians 3, verses 8 through 12. And it reads, Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he has purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. I have just read to you Ephesians 3, verses 8 through 12. May the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his holy and divine word. All night I well, all day I know the angel watching over me, my Lord. They're watching all night. They're watching all day. I know the angels watching over me all night, all day, all night. They're watching all by my, 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 the angel. Watching over me, my Lord. They're watching all night. They're watching all day. I said the angels watching over me. Well, I went to the church house where I do my praying, and the angels watching over me, my Lord. My soul. Got a happy and I stayed all day long. The angels watching over me all night, all day. They're watching all my, 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 my. The angels watching over me, my Lord. They're watching all night. They're watching all day. I've got an angel watching over me. Well, now every night when I go to sleep, I know the angel the watching over me, my Lord. And I pray to the Lord, my soul he will keep. Yeah, the angels are watching over me all night. All day. I know the angels are watching over me. Well, amazing grace, how sweet the sound now. The angels are watching over me, my Lord. I once was a lost, but now I am found now. The angels are watching over me all night, all day, all night and all day. My, 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 the angels are watching over me, my Lord. They're watching all night, they're watching all day. Lord, the angels are watching over me. Thank God, watching all night, Amen. watching over us as we sleep, Hallelujah. as we travel, 
as we go about everyday life's journey. Everybody all right? Absolutely. I know it's Super Bowl Sunday, but this Super Soul Sunday. All we right saving all souls right. and keeping right. souls saved. Right. Right. Get a Lord a hand clap of praise this morning for Super Soul Sunday. Super Soul Sunday. Sunday, all right. Well, let the Spirit of the Lord, let oh, it rise right. among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord come on and rise. Come on and let the praises of our Let the praises arise among us. Let it rise. Sing, oh. Let the spirit of the Lord come on and rise. Come on and let the spirit of the Lord come on and rise. Come on and let the praises of us, let the praises arise. Among us, let it rise. Yeah, sing Let the spirit of the Lord come on and rise among us. Let the spirit of the Lord we're gonna let it rise. Yeah, let the praises of our we gonna let it rise. Let it rise. Yeah, sing oh yeah. Come on and let it rise. Yeah, let the joy of the Lord. Let the joy of the Lord come on and rise. Well, let the joy of the Lord come on and rise. Come on and let the praises of our King. We're going to let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Well, sing it all. Oh, yeah. Come on and let it rise. Yeah, let the peace of the Lord. Let the peace of the Lord we'll come on and rise among us. And let the peace of the Lord we're gonna let it rise. Come on and let the praise of our King. We're gonna let it rise. Yeah, let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Sing oh, oh, oh. We'll sing it again. Sing. Sing it again. I sing it like you mean. Let the spirit of the Lord come on and rise. So among us, let the spirit of the Lord. We're going to let it rise. Come on and let the praise of our King. We're going to let it rise. Yeah, let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. The church say, oh, 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 oh. it again, say, oh. Well, let me hear you say, you're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. 
the praise is alright. We're gonna let it rise. Yeah, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise. Say yo. Let the spirit of the Lord rise among us. Amen. Before he can rise among us, he got to rise in us. Because the Holy Spirit lives inside of each of us. Amen. 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 I tell you, we serve a mighty good God. And he is not just good some of the time. God is good all of the time. And all of the time, God is good. And if God has been good to you, say amen. amen. If he's brought you from nowhere to somewhere, I say amen again. Amen. Set your feet on solid ground, say amen again. Amen. You love the Lord, say amen again. Amen. I love the Lord's church, say amen again. You love the Lord's church, turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor I love you. And ain't nothing funny about my love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, hey, I tell you, God is good. I, I had to smile. I looked to my left and, <clears throat> and didn't recognize the person. And, uh, but I, I recognized the husband, but I didn't recognize the wife. And uh, she had on a, got on an Eskimo cap and mask and all wrapped up. Because <laughs> y'all know I don't call no name, but. <laughs> I had to smile. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she, I, I know she probably got the memo that it was going to be cold today. Amen, amen. God is good. It is good to see all of you here this morning. Amen. And the praise of our God. And <clears throat> especially those who are visiting with us. We want you to know you are honored guests. We appreciate your presence uh, with us uh, this morning in our worship. Welcome those on live stream as well. We appreciate you on uh, 
you are uh, viewing the live screen and know some uh, still have situation conditions that prevent them from uh, coming in service uh, uh, in person uh, worship but uh, we trust and pray that you will uh, be able to come you come out I know <clears throat> some have health conditions but others some of y'all don't have health conditions and and uh, you 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 uh, uh what one preacher said <clears throat> said uh told the folks I told his folks said you know the virus at Walmart too praise the Lord it ain't just in the church I, yeah y'all worry about the virus yeah well if they can't come to church cause you know the virus you know and we and everything but you go everywhere else and you know the virus showing up out there at Walmart. Everybody out there tends to go to Walmart. Yeah, all racial groups out there. <laughs> Mask wearing, <laughs> no wearing. Yeah, praise the Lord. So we just thank God for you. Uh, amen, amen. Uh, but uh, uh, you see, in person, uh, <clears throat> worship is, you know, is a design not so much for God's benefit. It is designed for our benefit. Praise the Lord. Where well, we can come and exhort and encourage one another. Praise the Lord. Break bread together. Amen. Amen. Now, everything that God wants to do in worship is, is designed to, to uh, uh, encourage each of us. So, you know, because something you're going through, somebody else has gone through it as well. And they can encourage you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And let me, let me drop this while I'm here. Um. Let's, let's don't take in these excuses for not coming in worship. Coming to worship. Let, 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 let's don't, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, fall for. There are reasons and there are some excuses for folk to give. And especially if you're dealing with a situation, you need to come on out and hear a word from the Lord. Because God's word is healing word. Amen. It's an encouraging word. You need to come out here. You know, I, I just, uh, uh, yeah, they gave me a little extra time, so, you know. <laughs> I, I, just, I just be encouraged when I see our seniors coming, you know. And I know they're in pain. I know they're dealing with some situations. And, you know, they come with the walkers, and they, uh, uh, I ain't called no names. And they come with their pain and, and, and their problems, but they're here, and they come. Because if you're going to receive healing, if you're going to receive uh, encouragement, it's, 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 it's in the assembly gathered with those who have light, precious faith. Praise the Lord. I'm just, oh, preach, Brother Pittman. Thank you. Thank you. Me that y'all own it, y'all own it. But I ain't got the preaching yet. I'm just, uh, I'm just a <laughs> Amen. I'm just encouraging. You know, y'all, I got the memo. I got the memo. Amen. This is not my favorite team, but it's the only one shirt I had was given to me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's a, I just don't want to brag, but it's authentic. You see the seal? You know, this is a, you know, this didn't come from Walmart and, 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 and Dollar Tree. This, this is the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> now I ain't putting down with y'all, y'all you know. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, this is real deal. I, uh, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. And it was given to me, you know. It was given to me. And the man paid it. I, I, he had the tag on one hundred fifty dollars. He told me, he said, you know, hold on to it. You know, gonna be worth something. I say, that's what the person told me. Say, you're gonna be worth something. I say it's worth something right now. Oh, worth $150. <laughs> they the Lord. Amen. 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 Don't y'all be hating. Don't y'all be hating. There he go. There he go again. <laughs> I want to thank um, my son uh, for doing an excellent job and leading son and entire uh, uh, praise leader. Uh, the team did an outstanding job there in Lexington, Mississippi, and and, and so much so that you know, uh, even even the, uh, those of 
the the uh, our white brother never there. They just just excited on their feet and uh, just just impressed with the with the praise. And that, that's that's uh, that's real good. We do it like we do it. You know, we don't try to make no bones, and you know, because we got them present, we got the no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, we got a, We are from a different culture. Yeah, it's, it's amazing me how we get among them. We just got we tone it down. Yeah, don't 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 say amen. Don't say hallelujah. Nothing. <laughs> all right, when you gonna start preaching, but I want to thank them for him for doing an outstanding job. All I praise Lord and thank the uh, congregation for their support, and and certainly want to thank uh, uh, Brother Shure doing an outstanding job uh, there as well. And uh, <clears throat> and uh, as he said on last week, that he had just come from uh, um, uh, the coast. And celebrating his, his mother's, you know, he said in law, but mother in law, uh, birthday, and uh, and uh, came back up here and preached down in uh, uh, Lexington. And I told him, I said, I'm tagging you today for preaching here at Hanging Moss. And uh, he did a he did an outstanding job. We just uh, thank God for him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we we're excited about the mission work there in Lexington. Is it continuing? And uh, we we continue to ask for your uh, support as as well. Uh, I want to say something about my son's uh, um, appreciation on last Sunday. We was with him. We had a great time there in Brookhaven, Center uh, Street Church of Christ. Everything went well. My son just took the roof off the house again down there, and we just thank God. Uh, uh, for the work that uh, he's doing, is, uh, he and Kim, his wife, they are a team, and they're doing outstanding work. And the young people, I was so impressed with the young people being so involved in everything and, and uh, uh, growing. I, see, I saw the maturity uh, of, of the young men leading worship and, and so forth, and young ladies as well. And it's just a... Just a uh, just a beautiful thing to to be a part of and to see and we just thank God uh, for what uh, he's doing there in uh, that area uh, Center Street Church of Christ um, and just uh, want to want to just thank God I, I mean you know I just when, uh, every morning I just thank him for life yeah. praise the Lord I just thank him for life regardless of what the day presents I just thank him for the strength and for life. Amen, amen, amen. They want to thank my uh, daughter uh, in love, not daughter in law, and uh, those who ever work with her. She, uh, you know, she just go get things done. She's doing these decorations and uh, 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 and uh, she just uh, do do what she does in, in that in that area. A talent that came to the house and did some decoration over there. Lexington did some decoration. She just decorating all over the place. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, whoever working with you, we just thank God for you. Um, on Friday, we celebrated our 16th anniversary. I uh, had a had a. I had a dinner catered. I mean, it was just outstanding. Catered. Yeah, you know. And I cater, and I, you know, she, my wife, I guess she will say she the caterer because she went went to the restaurant and brought, the, brought it back. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, and I tell you, it was, a, it was a dinner fit for a king and a queen. And, uh, I want to tell y'all what we had because I know y'all want me to hurry up and get through so y'all can go get your dinner. Amen. But I, I tell you a little bit of, uh, I can't, I know you said on Facebook, yeah, he going to tell it all. He going to tell it all. I ain't going to tell it all. I ain't going to tell it all. <laughs> so she got a surprise gift package. Surprise gift, you know. And she didn't know what was in it. You know, surprise! I said, "This is for uh, today, 
It was Friday. It's for uh, Saturday. It's for Sunday. And it's for Monday. Valentine's Day. All wrapped up in one. And uh, yeah. I won't tell y'all what was in it, but uh, amen. But everything that was in it was celebratory. <laughs> All right, let me go and preach. I know some of y'all said, well, we ain't, ain't going to start preaching. It's time. It's time. How many of y'all brought your Bibles today? Amen. Raise your Bibles high. Amen. Raise your Bibles. Raise your, go ahead and raise your cell phones and your, uh, well, tablets and all. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, I know you read chapter 3, but we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 1. I want to thank Brother Benefield for doing an outstanding job uh, on this morning. And uh, I like his expression, it tickled me, <laughs> at least with his expression. He says, you know, talking about God's promises and God's goodness, said you can stick a fork in it. And it's a dumb. <laughs> it's dumb. That's how they heard that was painted. <laughs> it was a done deal. Praise the Lord. That's what you can depend on God. It's a done deal when it comes to his promises. Good to see those who have recovered from various uh, illnesses. And you're here today because of the goodness of God. Can I see? Can I hear some amens to that? Yeah, man, when God has lifted you up and God has brought you back, it's, it's, it's because of the grace and the goodness of God. In Ephesians chapter 1, um, we will begin reading with verse uh, number 8. We'll just go ahead and read all these verses. The Bible says, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. And then in verse number 12, it says that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Is that in your Bibles? Let us pray. Our Father and our God is once again that we come before your throne of grace. We come with thanksgiving in our hearts and praise on our lips, for thou art worthy to be praised. We're thankful most of all for Jesus Christ, who gave his life that we might have life. We're thankful for the church of Christ, which he purchased with his own blood. We're thankful for the gospel of Christ, which indeed has the power to save the whole world. And Father, we are thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, who lives inside of us, who teaches us, who guides us, who shows us things that come, bring back to remembrance the things that we have studied, but also gives us the power to be victorious in life. And Father, we ask now that we allow your word to have free course in our hearts, that we will receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. Use me, Father, as a vessel to proclaim your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in Jesus' holy name that we ask it all. Let the church say, amen, amen, amen. We are still on this series 
with the subject, I am coming out in view of God's eternal purpose. Um, I believe this is probably part number four. I am coming out in view of God's eternal purpose. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm coming out. I'm still coming out. I'm coming out. Ain't too many folks said they're coming out. I guess you're still in. But you need to come on out. Praise the Lord. You need to come on out and let folk know you're coming out. Praise the Lord. Because uh, I mentioned the fact that uh, uh, you ought to say I'm coming out of, of my stagnation. Some folks are just stagnated in their life. I'm coming out of isolation. Hey, I'm coming out of polarization. I'm coming out of frustration. I'm coming out of immobilization. I'm coming out of fear with faith. I'm coming out of complacency with urgency. I'm coming out of doubt with determination. I'm coming out of weakness uh, with strength. I'm coming out of uh, timidness with boldness. Whatever it is that you need to come out of, it need to be done in view of God's eternal purpose. Whatever you're coming out, whatever you need to come out. Some of folks need to just come out of negativity. Yeah, some folks need to just come out of complaining. Yeah, some folks need to just come out uh, of and making excuses for everything. You're just making excuses. You need to come out of, of making excuses. Uh, and the reason why folk are still in and not coming out, one reason is because of your focus. You see, it's because of your focus. You're coming out in view of God's e eternal purpose. But if you are focused on, uh, on the temporary, amen, and not focus on the eternal, you're gonna have frustration all in, in your life. Every day of your life, you're gonna have frustration because what you're doing, you'll focus on the temporary and not on the eternal. I just said something, I just said something. Because you know when you think about it, you, you, you know your frustration is what's going on with you right now. Y'all see it here? Over there in 2 Corinthians, go over there, I'm going to show you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I'm going to show you why you're having frustration. It's because of your focus and what you're looking at. Praise the Lord. It's what you're seeing. That's what's causing you anxiety. That's what's that's what causing you uh, a frustration is because of your focus. Listen uh, uh, what Paul says, and he's talking about of faith, you see. When you're looking at, at, at faith, uh, we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, fear will frustrate you. And with you, uh, when you are fearful, it causes you to be frustrated. That's why Paul told Tim that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Of love, power, and a sound man, a self-control. If you have a spirit of fear, a spirit of frustration, of a, spi a spirit of anxiety, uh, amen, that didn't come from God. It didn't come from God. And it's about what you will focus on. What, now watch what it says about the spirit of faith. Here's the spirit of faith. The Bible says we have in verse number 13, we have in, I won't spend too much time on this, but we, it says that we have in the same spirit of faith. You got to have a spirit of faith, not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, this is what Paul is saying, we also believe and therefore speak knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with him. And then you follow all the four. For 
all things are for your sake. For which we were, we, we cause we faint not, but though an outward man perish yet to what? The inward man is renewed day by day for our light of fiction. And Paul is saying he's referring to what they were going through, light of fiction. Yeah. Light, all, all you got is a little heady. <laughs> yeah. all, all, all you got is probably high blood pressure. Yeah. But he's talking about persecution. And he, he's talking about not only persecution, he's talking about all the uh, dangers and toils and things that he went through. Sometimes just read all the stuff he went through. Amen. All, this, all the stuff that, that happened to him. And he called it a light affliction. Uh, but understand that even though if you read back up in verse number seven, he says, uh, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. He said, now we are troubled on every side, yet, what's this? Not distressed. Yeah. Listen to Paul. He said, we are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. You need to have a but not in your life. When you're going through some stuff, you need to have a but not. Because you see, you may, you may be sick and feeling ill, uh, but the but not, you ain't dead. Yeah, man, you may not have all you want to have, but, but, but not. Yeah, amen, you're still alive. You still have food on your table. We, we, we are, many, some of us, I don't say many of us, many of us, we complain about everything. Everything. We complain about everything. It's never a good day. Praise. I like folks to call me sometimes, tell me about the good day. Yeah, tell me about the good day. I just call you, Brother Privilege, to tell you I had a good day today. I, I just call you to tell you what happened, the blessings that happened to me today. Hey, praise! I just I just got to tell you, uh, you know how 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 that I feel good today. Hey, Amen. That's what y'all to do. I mentioned that uh, down there. You know, instead of having a pity party, we ought to be having a praise party to the goodness of God. Can I get a good amen on that? And so understand, he says, the light of fiction for our light of fiction, which is for. Uh, it was but for a moment. He says, for a moment, work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. He says, that affliction, he says, it's just for a moment. It's going to get better. It's something you probably got to go through. But it's going to get better. You need to, you need to hope that it, it, it's, it's going to get better. Amen. Don't just stay in the valley. Go on through the valley. Amen. Praise God. Some of us, we camp out in the valley. It just camp out in the valley. And David said, we need to walk through the valley. A shed of deer. Don't just camp out in the valley. Praise God. And having a pity party with yourself. Amen. Y'all can say amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, stop having a pity party with yourself. Stop having a praise party. Amen. Because God's been mighty good to you. Yeah, he's been good to you. Amen. So he says here uh, that uh, uh, the, the affliction, the light affliction, which is but for a moment, work it for us, what? A far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Many times we'll stop right there. But the next verse says, it worketh for us while. Don't omit that little word while. Is up there? While. If you want affliction uh, to work for you, understand this word while. It's going to work for you. Why? And it is not going to work for you if you move the word why. <laughs> See, so watch what, how it connects it. It says, working for us what? While we look not, not 
at the things at the things which are seen which are seen but at the things but at the things which are not seen which are not seen for the things is going to work for us while we are not looking at the things that are seen not what is going to work for us when we are not focused on on what we are going through right now the seen stuff the stuff that you see in your senses, the stuff that you feel. It, 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 don't, don't focus on that where the aches and pains. Don't focus on the aches and pains. Don't, don't focus on the turmoil. Don't, don't focus on anxiety. Don't focus on what's going on in the political scene. Don't focus on what's going on overseas. Don't focus on that. Those are seen stuff. But focus on what is not seen. Let me tell you some stuff that's not seen. Amen. The things that are not seen are eternal. That's what you focus on. Things eternal. Things that's going to be here when all this other stuff is gone. The promises of God. Focus on the promise of God. Focus on the goodness of God. Focus on, amen. That's what you focus on. The things that are not seen because the things that are seen he are said temporal, are temporal they are temporal <laughs> uh, they're just temporary they're just temporary yeah yeah you may be going through something right now relation that's just temporary yeah that, that's just a moment that's, that's gonna pass when you understand you know the eternal they're just temporary they're temporary stuff they cause frustration but, but, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Yeah, they, 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 they are eternal. Things that are not seen are eternal. And that's what you focus on. The reason why I went over that, uh, because some of us want to know why we're not having the abundant life. Yeah, why are you miserable all the time? Why you let other folk make you miserable? And some of us got enough Christianity just to make us miserable. <laughs> we 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 uh, we straddle the, uh, straddle the fence. Yeah, yeah. Don't be straddle the fence, especially if you're a man. You may slip. <laughs> some of y'all to get that on the way home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Be committed. Be all in. Amen. Praise the Lord. Whatever, whatever your situation is, whatever uh, you your uh, in your life, whatever your circumstances, uh, whatever situation you find yourself in, understand this: that God's purpose for your life has not changed. God's purpose for your life hasn't changed. He wants the best for you. He wants the best for me. Amen. His purpose has not changed. And whatever you're going through, understand God's purpose remains the same. Because it is eternal. Amen. So let me go, go into my points now. And uh, Yeah, I got plenty of time. Uh, we talked about just doing a review, <laughs> and it's a little dark in because I can't really see them hands through it. But uh, I figured, yeah, I got plenty of time. We 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 talked about God's eternal purpose. Number one is to be what class? Glorified. Number two, we talked about God's eternal purpose is to be is in, rather, the divine mystery revealed to Paul. And number three, we talked about God's divine purpose is, uh, eternal purpose is to unite both Jew and Gentile together in one in Christ. And now, now for, number four uh, is God's eternal purpose is to gather together in one, all things. 
underscore that all things, all things, that's what it says over here in Ephesians, going back to one, all things in Christ, both in heaven and and which are on the earth, even in the him. And that's number four. But we're not going to deal with number four today. <laughs> we're not going to deal with number four today. We, we, we'll deal with that now. But I want y'all to put, uh, underscore that all thing. Because uh, what God has done, uh, he has uh, put all things in one, in Christ. And we're going to talk about those all things. Wherever the all things are, they're in Christ. They're in Christ. If you want the all things, you got to get in Christ. Like I said, I'm going to preach that next week. But what I want to do today, I want to deal with number, uh, the verse uh, 11. I want us to uh, do a, it won't take me long, a, a further study or an examination of God's intent, uh, eternal purpose in uh, verse 11. And where it says, we'll read that again, in whom also ye have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. We'll do a further examination of this verse. I want us to look at three words in this verse. I want us to look at the word purpose. I want us to look at the word counsel. And I want us to look at the word will. You see all three words in this verse. Purpose, counsel, and will. And the reason I want us to give a closer examination or a closer look is to show that God's purpose was his plan and his plan was his purpose. To bring us into a, a better understanding of the salvation of mankind. Do you understand this plan is about salvation? It's about sanctification. And it is about eventual glorification. It was not done haphazardly. It was a predetermined plan. If you look at verse number five, you'll see where this word predestinated is, or predestined uh, is recorded, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Some folk want to know why this and why that. It's because of God's good pleasure. That's what he wanted. Praise the Lord. I'm not to uh, uh, deny. I'm not to argue against God's will. That's his good pleasure to bring all things together in one. That's, that's God's uh, good pur uh, purpose. But, and then also uh, uh, you look at having uh, uh, predestined us unto the adoption of children uh, by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure as I said, of his will. And then in this verse, it says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being what? Predestined 
according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. This thing just didn't happen coincidentally. It didn't happen haphazardly. You see, God had purpose. And you see this word purpose. See, the word purpose is a setting forth before uh, or forth, uh, before or forth what one sets before his mind proposes to himself deliberate uh, resolution, it suggests intelligent design. And what we have in uh, becoming Christ, what the faithful are in Christ, uh, uh, what we have become did not occur at random or by accident, but by the eternal design of God. And when you look at that word purpose and wherever, wherever it's mentioned, you can't help but understand that God had a design, a plan in mind for the salvation of mankind. And it was before the world began. Amen. Somebody will say amen. The second word is counsel, which denotes deliberate, uh, deliberation rather, and reflection it is the assembly of a council or the council. God did not act arbitrarily uh, in his purpose in Christ. He brought together the assembly. <laughs> I said he didn't act arbitrarily. He, he brought together the assembly or the council. Uh, and the council involved the Godhead body. Praise the Lord. Uh, it involved the Father, it involved the Son, and it involved the Holy Spirit. You can see this uh, in Acts chapter 2. Just turn over there in Acts chapter 2 where you find that Peter stood up and preached the first gospel sermon. He let them know ye these of ye men of, of Judea. Mm -hmm. Watch what it says. All ye that are Dwell in Jerusalem, be it known unto you. Hearken unto my words. He said, now, now these men are not drunken, as you suppose, but being it, but the what? Third hour of the day, Peter stood up to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The reason why Peter stood up, God, Jesus rather, had given him the keys to the kingdom of God. Over oh, then Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, he said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind down here shall be binding in heaven. Whatever you loose down here shall be loose in heaven. And what he was saying, whatever you may require down here, amen. For men to enter the kingdom to be saved is what is going is required in heaven. Because I have given you the interest required. I have given you the keys. Uh, and so Peter stands up and began uh, to preach uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He began to explain to them what was going on. Uh, uh, and he quoted the prophet Joel. And, and then he got uh, down here at verse 22. I'll make a long story short. Watch it. You in verse 22, he explained to them, said, ye men of what? Israel. Of Israel. Hear these words. Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. A man, approved, a man of God, approved of God. Among you. Among you. By miracles. Uh huh. And wonders. Uh, by miracles, wonders, and, and signs. Which God, which God, which God did by him in the midst, in of, the you, midst of you as you, as yourself, you or yourselves also, also know. There's some things you already know. You got evidence of. Hey, praise the Lord. You got the evidence of that Jesus uh, was approved of God because of the wonders and signs that he did. And you saw this. So you have some evidence of the fact of who Jesus uh, was. Even though you denied him, there was evidence that he was approved by God. And what evidence, you remember over there in, uh, uh, I believe there's is Luke 8, uh, 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 Luke 8, where he was on the Mount of Transfiguration. You remember, I think that after, after he had, um, is that Luke 8? Uh, we can go to the Matthew version. 
uh, 16, go to the next verse, but I think it's Luke 8. Is that right? Verse 1. Uh, uh, Luke 8, have I, have I got it right? Uh, I have I got it right? I may have, may not have it right, but, but anyway, you know it's in the Bible somewhere. Uh, but you remember after his baptism, amen, he was standing uh, uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration. You remember that in Luke 9? Uh, just one chapter over. That's the reason why you need to have some pages. <laughs> Y'all still here. <laughs> Luke 9. What, 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 what was it saying in Luke 9? Y'all got that? Luke 9. I want you to see this. In Luke 9. Yeah. Is that it? In Luke 9? No, it ain't Luke 9. Is that Luke 9? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. What, and, what, it, what and, it came, and it came to pass. Verse 28. Okay. Verse 28. And it came to pass. Uh-huh. About and eight days after these saying. Yeah, okay, eight days after these saying. That, that's it, that's it. He took uh, Peter. Uh, what you reading out of the NIV, oh, King New, James. New King James? King James? Mm -hmm. Okay, read that verse again. And it came to pass. Came to pass. About and eight days after about these eight saying. About eight days. That one, well, about eight days. Mm -hmm. About a week later. Mm -hmm. Amen. Continue reading. Watch this. He took Peter. Peter. Uh, and John. Uh, he take his what? And John, John and James and James and went up and went up into a mountain into to pray. Into a mountain, read. And as he prayed, pray. and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance uh -huh. was altered. Uh, altered, read. And his raiment and his raiment was white as white and glistering and glistering. And behold, and the Bible said, behold, there talked with there, him. There was what? There talked with him. There talked with him. Two men, two men, which were Moses, Moses and, and Elias, who appeared. In glory, uh, in, in glory, and spake, and spake of his decease, uh -huh. which he should accomplish it, read, at go ahead. Jerusalem. Uh -huh. But Peter, uh -huh. and they that were with him, I don't him, have time to get in all that, but, but and it Peter, came to pass, yeah. as they departed from uh -huh. him, uh -huh. Watch this. Peter said unto Jesus, said, Lord, what? Master, Master it, it is, is good, good for us, us to be here, here. And let, let us, us do what? Make, make. Three tabernacles. Three tabernacles. One for thee. One for thee. One for Moses. One for Moses. And one for, and Elias. One for Elias. Uh Not knowing what, what he, he said. said. He didn't know what he was saying. In other words, he didn't know what he was talking about. Amen. Wanted to build three tabernacles. Praise the Lord. He gave one for uh, Moses, one for Elias, and one for Jesus. And the Bible says what? While, while he, does he spake. yet spake, while he was still talking, there came a cloud that overshadowed them, and they feared as they, uh, amen. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, whom I am what? Well Please hear him. Hear ye him. There's the evidence. You are the son of God. And they were not to hear Moses. They were not to hear Elias. They were to hear Christ. Because God said, This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. And so going back to Acts chapter 2. Uh, they had been given evidence. That's what Peter was saying. You have the evidence. Amen. A man that was approved of God by these miracles, wonders, and, and signs. And then verse 23, this is what I want you to see. And the Bible says, him being delivered, by going the, back to Acts 2, him being delivered by the determinate counsel. By the determinate counsel. There it is. Mm -hmm. uh, that is right there. The determinate counsel and for knowledge of God. You see, God had already predetermined uh, that when man sinned, there need to be a savior to a man to die for his sin. They went into counsel. Praise the Lord. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we need to uh, go and counsel and determine what we're going to do about this situation. Man has fallen from grace. Man has separated himself from God because of sin. Man has, has, has fallen to the dictates of the devil. Man is in a desperate state. What, 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 what can we do? 
Son, what do you suggest? Holy Spirit, what do you suggest? How are we going to bring back man from this fall? Well, they were discussing the fact that the blood and bulls and goats couldn't take away sin. They probably discussed the fact that there was no man living that could die because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They were discussing who will go and say amen and hear the son step forward saying, I I'll go. Amen. The perfect lamb of God. I'm preaching already. I'm preaching better than a whole, whole, whole lot of y'all looking. You see, the son stepped forward and said, uh, Hear my, send me. And so then, the, after the council, they had determined that Jesus would be born. Amen. Of a virgin Mary. After they determined that he would live among us. After he had determined that he would be tempted in all manner yet without sin. After they had determined that he would go to Calvary and shed his blood for the remission of our sins. After they determined that he must die. He must be buried and he must rise again the third day in order to redeem man from the sin. It didn't happen until they went into council with the plan of the Father and Jesus willingly submitted to the plan of God. Aren't you glad that he willingly submitted? It was difficult. I, yes, it was difficult. It was hard for him to do, but 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 he went on anyway. I know it was hard because you over there in Hebrews chapter 5, go over there if you will, uh, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number uh, uh, 7 uh, through 9, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7 through 9, that's try to hasten to my seat. I got about 30 more minutes, but I try to hasten uh, to my seed. Hebrews chapter 5. It was difficult. Sometimes we think it's, it, 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 it's, it, it's easy to do God's will. No, it ain't always easy. It's not always easy, but we have to submit to the will of God. It wasn't easy for Christ. Yeah, we, we, we talk about it like it was easy. It wasn't easy. The Bible says in Hebrews uh, chapter 5, watch this. Who in verse the days, eight, nine, seven. Let's look at the first chapter 7. Watch this. Who in the days of his flesh. But the Bible says who in the days of his flesh. When he had offered up prayers. When he had offered up prayers. Up prayer, and supplications. And supplications. With strong with crying. With strong crying. And tears. And tears. Unto him. Unto him. That was able to save that him. able to save him. From death. From death. And was heard. And was heard. And that he feared. In that he feared. feared. You see, he's talking about, the Hebrew writer's talking about uh, uh, in the, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, how he prayed to the Father, let this cup pass, but not mine will, but let thine will be done. He went to him the second time. If it be your will, let this cup pass, but not if a uh, mine will, but let thine will be done. And Luke, Luke Virgin says his sweat was as great drops of blood. Uh, but he went to him the third time and said, Not mine will be done, but let thine will be done. It was difficult for him, uh, amen, uh, to go to Calvary. But he submitted to God's will. And all God is asking us to do is obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. All he's asking us to do, amen. We might get a little rejection, but it ain't nothing like it. what Christ went through. Uh, he went through that because it was difficult. And sometimes it's difficult to leave family folk and obey the gospel of Christ. Sometimes it's difficult to get out of another group and get in the right group. Sometimes it's difficult to say no, amen, and but uh, yes to the Lord. They say no to the, I know it's difficult, amen. I've been through it. All of us have been through it. But Christ willingly submitted uh, to the Father's will. Look at verse number eight. It says, though he, he were, a son, were a son, yet. Yet learned he obedience, he learned obedience by the things which he by suffered, the things that he suffered, and, and became the author of made. eternal salvation. All those that obey him, even though he were a son, he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. And I'll use the answer uh, this question: If God didn't make an exception with his son, 
you think he gonna make an exception with you? If he didn't make an exception with his own son, how you think he's he not gonna make an exception with you and with me? Because we're gonna have to learn to obey the Lord. Amen. He obeyed the Lord, even though it cost him a great deal of suffering, uh, because he understood. Uh, that this was the plan of God, and, and this was the rather the purpose of God or the plan of God, but this was also uh, through the counsel of God. They formulated this plan through counsel. But then the last word I want to deal with is the divine will of God. You see, divine will was involved, uh, what which involved, which means. Uh, it, it, it was the way it was carried out, or the way the plan was carried out. The Bible says he worked at all things. Watch this. After the counsel of his will, after he had gone in the counsel, uh, amen, that's when his divine will was involved. Uh, that's when he acted upon the plan. That means that God's sovereign a will is over all the events uh, pertaining uh, to a uh, redemption of mankind. Whatever the event is happening is, is, is surrounding uh, the will of God as it pertains to redemption. You see in Romans chapter 8, watch this, verse 28, the one we often quote, it says, and we know, amen, and we know that God worked all things together. There's some things when you're going through some stuff, some things you got to know. You got to know that God working all things together for good to them that what? Love God to them who are what? Called according to his purpose for whom he did foreknow. He predestined, the word again, to be what? Conform to, to the image of, of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. You see, God works all things together for good. Whatever the events going on in your life, he's working it out for your good. Whatever events going on in the world, he's working it out for our good. Amen. Whatever's going on in your life, he's working it out. For you good. So then what we have, we have divine intellect, which is thought out. We have divine counsel, which is reasoned out. We have divine will, which is carried out. We have divine love, which is motivated out. I'm trying to close this thing. You see, I want you to see that God's uh, uh, intellect was involved. God's counsel was involved. God's will was involved. And God's love was involved. John chapter 3, verse number 16. God so loved the world that he gave what? His only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Romans chapter 5, verse number 8. I'm trying to close this thing. But God commending his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. It was love that motivated God to action. It was love that caused him to give his only begotten son. It was love that caused him to give heaven's best. It was love that caused Christ to go to Calvary's Hill. It was love, the motivation of love. Now, when you love somebody, when you love something, you, you're motivated to do your best for them. Yeah, it, uh, tomorrow is what? Uh, what's tomorrow? Amen. Valentine's Day. Uh, you, we call that the, oh, I guess the love day. Yeah, uh, love is what? Holiday. Well, if you don't have a, a lover, then just turn to Jesus. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, turn, yeah, turn to Jesus because he made a tremendous sacrifice. It was love. What I'm trying to get you to see, I'm closing now. It was love that motivated God. It was a love that 
motivated Jesus. It was love that motivated the Holy Spirit. That's why I can sing. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply staying within, seeking to ride no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing crying from the waters. He lifted me now, say, fam, my love lifted me. I was love. I was sinking deep in sin, but love lifted me. Stand on your feet. Love. Amen. When I see Jesus, I see love. When I see Jesus, amen, being taken from judgment hall to judgment hall, I see love. When I see him putting a crown of thorns around his head, I see love. When I see him beating him like he uh, to a bloody pub, I see love. When I see him going uh, to Calvary's Hill, to God got the hill with an old rugged cross on his shoulder, I see love. When I see him nailing nails in his feet, nailing nails in his hands, I see love. When I see him put it on an old rugged cross, I see love. When I hear him saying, Father, Father, why? as I forsaken me, I see love. When I hear him say, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. I see love. It was love that lifted me, but I tell you, he died and shed his blood for because he loved us so much, and but he was buried, the Bible said. But on the third day morning, love got up. And when he got up, love said, all oh, power! In heaven and earth, I'm going to preach this thing anyway. All power of heaven and earth been given to me. That's why you can't get to the Father except through Jesus Christ. You can't look your pretty your way. Uh, amen. To get uh, to the Father, you got to go through the Father. You get to the Father through Jesus Christ. I see love. Amen. And I see love going back to heaven and sitting down on the right hand of God. And the Bible says he forever live it to make intercessions for us. Now that's love. That's love. You want a, want a definition, a picture of love, that's, that's it. That's it. It's not this feeling we get, you know, that we, and you know, that may be just you got an upset stomach. Amen. Butterflies and all that, you know, that, that, that ain't no, that's not God for love. Amen. If you're not committed uh, to one another, that, that ain't, it ain't love. Praise Lord. Love is when it's uh, good days and bad days. Amen. That's love. Is that right? It was difficult for Christ. But we see a picture of love. Making the, the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. And I want us to, <clears throat> I wanted us to do a little thorough examination because some of us, it, it, it seemed like some of us it just, you know, just seemed like they didn't really, didn't, it wasn't a whole lot involved in the salvation of mankind. And sometimes those of in Christ can take things for granted. And not really appreciate all of what God has done for us. And uh, one of the last part of that verse says, to the intent that he may have the praise of his glory. And what all calls us to praise God, even we don't have, you know, what we think we ought to have, we ought to be praising him for bringing about salvation in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because without Jesus, without Jesus, we were still lost on our way to a devil's hell. But Jesus came in our place, took our place, took the beating that we deserve. Amen. Took the death that we deserve so that we could have salvation. That's why we always be people of praise. We ought to be a people of praise. Don't go around, you know, having looking sad and mad all the time. What you mad about? You ought to be glad about salvation. And God has given us the means by which we can have salvation. And we're going to put out next term that salvation is in Christ. 
is in Christ. And so the question ought to be, how do I get in Christ? You must first have to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Believe that with all your heart. Be willing to repent of your sins. Change your mind. It's a change of mind. It's going to lead to a change of ways or a change of actions. And then you're going to have to confess with your mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then based on that confession, we will baptize you in water. We will baptize you in Christ. According to 1 Corinthians, Galatians 3, 26, 7, and 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13, by one spirit we all baptized into one body. Galatians chapter 3, 26 and 27, for we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, but male nor female, but we all are one in Christ Jesus. And as a child of God, you, you, you become the righteousness of God. God's not looking at your righteousness. He's looking at the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Because our righteousness will never be good enough. Because we still mess up. Some of us mess up more than others, but you still mess up. Some of us sin more than others, but you still sin. You know, there's no person, no child of God that, that does not sing. I said it does not sing. Because there is the sin of omission. There is the sin of commission. And then there's a sin of disposition. Some of us say, well, I ain't committed that. But there's so much you have omitted. Amen. So much you have omitted. And then some of us just got a bad attitude. That's a sin too. You come in here with a bad attitude. Can't nobody talk with you. You don't want to be around nobody. Referring to church folk as them folk. You know, when I, I know when a marriage is in trouble. You know when a person, a marriage is in trouble. They come out office and talk. They don't call the person by the name. They said that man, that woman. <laughs> I said, yeah, it, it ain't trouble. <laughs> that man did this. That woman did that. I said, who are you talking about? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And so you can come to Christ. You can come to Christ. You can decide right now. I'm going to give my life to Christ. That's what it's all about. I'm giving my life to Christ. And I made some mistakes, you know. And as a child of God, I made some mistakes. I've done some things. But thank God he's given you time enough to correct it. Praise the Lord. I was called uh, the other day. There's so much going on in the world. And a friend of mine called me. A preacher friend of mine called me. And uh, <clears throat> he wanted to know if his brother still here at the member of the church that came from Milwaukee. I remember the brother that played membership with us, but I told him, I said, well, I'm not aware of the, whether or not he's still a member here because I, you know, since COVID, I haven't seen him, you know, and he was coming sporadically then. But he was trying to get in touch with him, and he eventually did get in touch with him to inform him. And that was that day that his daughter was killed the day before, right there in Milwaukee. And the circumstances behind it, you know, is senseless. She was a manager at a, uh, what they call a, a dinner club. And it was a club uh, for uh, young people to go that didn't want to be around that, uh, the rowdy scene and the drinking scene in the regular club, you know, you know, you know in the, reg the regular club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those of us, you know, about the regular club. We'll go down in the regular club. 
I'm just looking at where I'm not. not I'm just, let me look over here. Yeah, yeah. We we know we know we know. You don't act like y'all been all all this good all your life. Yeah. yeah. Some of y'all probably still in. You know. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So I ain't I ain't, I ain't, I ain't condemned. You just need to grow and find out they ain't the place to be. Come on to this club. Yeah. Come on out this club. But anyway, she was a manager of the club, and uh, at the door, told him, "You're not old enough, son, to come in. You know, you have to be. You don't have to be a certain age." And he the, he got mad because he wouldn't let him in the club. He went and got his gun and started shooting. He shot three people, and she was one that died. Just 21 years old. So what I'm what I'm saying to you. Tomorrow is not promised. It's not promised. All we have is right now. Why are you keeping it off? Why don't you just, just come on, get you get all in. Amen. So you can have peace and you can have joy. No matter what happens, you know that God's eternal purpose is that all men be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. It was your love that lifted me. It was your love. It was love that lifted me. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. It God was love. your love. love. God bless you, God lifted me. me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Don't be afraid to come. Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. Sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry Look, the waters lifted me now save God bless you. God bless you. It was your love. I mean, y'all love, no love lifted up. That lifted me. It was your love that lifted me. I was seeking. Is there another? Is there another? Far from the peaceful shore, the deep sang within, seeking to write no more. But, but the master of the sea heard my, my despairing cry. Am I? Don't you know love lifted me? Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. You know that love lifted me. Dead me, oh, love, oh, 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 when nothing else could have love lifted me. I know, I know, I know, love lifted me, oh, you 
it was love. Could have loved, lifted me. I know, I know, I know, love lifted even. Yes, it was your love. And ooh, when nothing else could have loved, lifted. Thank Brother Pittman for that awesome message. Thank him. Give him a love deposit. Good, good. Brother Ronnie uh, Connie said that uh, he's, have, he's repented of sin. Pray for him to be stronger. Uh, he want to he <coughs> be an asset to the cause of Christ. So keep him in prayer. Amen. Also, continue to keep my sister Georgia Lee. She's uh, getting better. She said she's going to work to be here next Sunday. She obeyed the gospel about a week or so ago and she hadn't been able to come get her get her certificate but she want to be in service. But also there's Brother Charles Jennings. I talked with him yesterday and he said that he having problems with his hip. He can't hardly walk. Keep him in prayer. That's the reason he said he hasn't been able to be here. And so keep Brother Charles uh, Jennings in prayer. In addition to those, again, I want to thank Brother Pittman. Great lesson, uh, Brother Pittman, this morning, and Brother LaSure. Give him some, some praise, too, So in Lexington this morning, coming out in view of God's eternal purpose. Uh, Brother Charles uh, has come, and he is thanking God for his love. Uh, these are his exact words, thanking God for his love. And he says, uh, I have, uh, have lost my focus and gotten off on the wrong track. But thank God I've gotten back on and refocused myself, and now I am more focused on his eternal purpose. Amen. So let's keep Brother Amen. Charles in Amen. prayer. Amen. Also, Sister Carrie Adams has come, and she's asking for prayers on behalf of her nephew, uh, who has lost his father, which is her brother-in-law. Uh, so she's asking prayers on behalf of her nephew. And also, the gentleman that Brother Pittman was referring to toward the end of his lesson, uh, Brother Joseph uh, Tucker, uh, she said that she grew up with him uh, in Forest, and uh, also she's praying for him and the family, and also his daughter, the one that uh, Brother Pittman had referenced, uh, who was killed uh, too. So she's asking for prayers on behalf of the Tucker family. So let's keep that family in prayer. If there's none others, we uh, will go God in prayer this time. Dear Father, we just thank you so much for uh, all that you have done, all you're doing, all that you're going to do for us. Be with those who have responded, uh, Father, in their own way, that you answer their prayers and that your name will be glorified. Be with those, Father, who are suffering, those who are bereaved. We ask a special prayer on their behalf, Father, and give us uh, the attitude of comfort that we should uh, provide for them as they go through this time in their lives. Uh, Father, through this season, uh, Father, knowing that it could, be, uh, could, uh, could have been us, uh, who are going through what they're going through currently. And so let's pray for them, uh, Father. Pray that uh, you will give them the strength that they need, uh, Father, to get through the situation that they're facing in their lives. Uh, we, Father, we come to you uh, just thanking you for grace and mercy. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Just thank you for the things that sometimes we take for granted. Uh, Father, we just thank you uh, for everyday life that we, when we wake up in the morning, Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for giving us the things that we need. Thank you for loving us. Even time, there are times that we don't even deserve to be loved, uh, Father, uh, because of the things that we have done in our lives. But thank God for your, uh, for your patience, for your uh, compassion that you've had toward us, Father, and that you show us each and every day. We're so grateful to you. And help us to not take for granted uh, what you have done for us, what you are doing and certainly for what you are going to do. We praise your name, uh, Father, and uh, we just give you the glory for all that you uh, do in our everyday lives. We love you, and we just uh, thank you, Father, for all of your many blessings. For us in your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 You all may be seated. Amen.
Uh, you know, this is Black History Month, and um, uh, normally we try to wrap up right after that, but there's just a couple things I want to remind you of that I've been charged with. Uh, on next Sunday, uh, the attire is African outfits. Uh, wear your most exquisite African outfits. So we want you to be mindful of that. I also want you to be mindful of, uh, again, uh, the women's ministry, uh, the prayer breakfast, which is on the 19th at 10 a.m., and the theme is such a time as this. Bobby Brantley is uh, uh, speaking to the adults, and Raven Dawes is speaking to the young ladies. And uh, we'll have a flyer for this to put on the screen next week, but uh, uh, one of our efforts as we celebrate black history is to raise funds for Christian education. So please support our fundraising efforts. Uh, t-shirt sales. One t-shirt will have Hanging Mouth Road, Church of Christ on it, and this t-shirt will be worn on the third Sunday in March, and the second t-shirt will have a, a generic godly message on it for anyone to purchase. Uh, to order your t-shirts, please visit uh, Margaret Stribling's website, uh, www.aperfectgiftmississippi.com, or uh, see any committee member to order your t-shirts. Um, also, uh, the prices are on the website. There's also a virtual black history program, uh, which is coming up upon the purchase of your $20 ticket for our virtual black history program. You'll be given a link to click on to join the event. Committee members will have tickets available next week. You'll be mesmerized with our program lineup on February the 26th uh, at 6 p.m. And we'll be celebrating the arts with singing, dancing, dramatization, the spoken word, and an HBCU uh, conversation. Uh, there are some sponsorship packets uh, at uh, between $250 and $499. It comes with four tickets. $500 and $999 come with six tickets. $1,000 for uh, $2,000 comes with $1,999 come with eight tickets. And then $2,000 plus come with 10 tickets. Uh, we'll be celebrating Black History 365 days a year. The third Sunday in each month will be our focal point for Black History. We are extending our fundraising efforts through July 31st, 2022. Please support these efforts. I appreciate you all taking the time to listen to me. Uh, I was looking out, and I just figured the, the best, you know, with all the different teams being represented, somebody would stand out in my mind. And, uh, and, and when I was looking out, uh, me and my wife, we stood out in my mind, you know, the way we were dressed alike, supporting our team. And... Uh, but we didn't have no star on there nowhere, so I'm disqualifying us. And then uh, I was expecting another couple to, to, to represent, and they did, but they, they got two different uh, teams in the household. So, um, you know, Charlie's just going to have to tighten up and dress like his wife next year. And, uh, but those saints represented right there on the second row, because we've been taught not to call no name. Look at them like they know who I'm talking about. Uh, they show sure looking good. Everybody looking good. Bro Brother Carl. Brother yes, Carl. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and, you know, in view of what my tag team partner said, he said he was wearing a jersey that was given to him, and it wasn't his favorite team, and it was worth a lot of money. All right? I got a T-shirt that was given to me, and I don't know how much it cost. It was given to me by my daughter. And I just want you all to see that Sundays, it reads, Sundays are for Jesus and Green Bay Packer football, all right? Ain't that something? Represent my team. Ain't that something? Well, uh, he just did something. Next year, we may have to have a parade of jerseys or, or, or something. Uh, you may be standing. Let us finish up with our uh, benediction. Is there anything else, uh, Brother Pittman? Leadership? Anything else? All right. Uh, and for all of y'all who know, because they family here, uh, High Key and Brienne, they brought a new baby girl in this weekend. Amen. And uh, uh, Penelope, Penelope. So her resume is going to be all right. She's going to be able to get her job. Uh, and, uh, and we just want to celebrate them. Amen. Uh, if you will, may the grace of God, the blood of Jesus, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide with us forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.